This man discovers an island of many people and captured by them. Today, I'm going to explain an American fantasy adventure comedy film called Gulliver's Travels. So there's this dude named Lemuel Gulliver, right? He's just your average guy living in a messy apartment in New York. But hold up, there's more! Lemuel has a wild crush on this journalist chick called Darcy Silverman. He's been pining for her forever, but the poor guy can't seem to gather the courage to confess his feeling. One day, Lemuel's co-worker, Dan, lands a promotion on his very first day on the job. And that just adds insult to injury because Lemuel's been stuck in the mailroom for a decade with zero respect from his colleagues. Dan tells him he's too chicken to get ahead in life. Ouch! But guess what? Fate gives Lemuel a chance to prove himself. Darcy offers him a travel writing gig to the Bermuda Triangle. Lemuel wants to impress her, so he's all in! He hops on a boat and sets sail for this crazy adventure. Everything's chill at first reading robot magazines and chugging coke like a pro. But then, out of nowhere, a gnarly storm hits. He's caught in a sea tornado and thrown into a total blackout. When Lemuel comes to, he's freaking paralyzed. And guess who's standing on his chest? Tiny people, like really tiny. We're talking Lilliputian tiny. Their boss calls himself Commander Edward Edwardian. Yeah, a double Edward, kind of weird, right? So there you have it. Lemuel's now stuck on an island full of many people who think he's some sort of beast. Gulliver's all like, whoa, what the heck is going on? And breaks free from the ropes like it's no biggie. He thinks it's all just a wild dream, so he tries to pinch himself shut. Meanwhile, Edward's shouting orders to his soldiers to take down the beast Gulliver. Those soldiers hook Gulliver's pants and knock him out cold. When he finally wakes up, guess where he finds himself? Tied up and being dragged into the tiny kingdom of Lilliput. The whole tiny town comes out to check out the giant. They even parade him into the royal palace, where King Theodore and his daughter, Princess Mary, are all like, whoa, what's going on here? Princess Mary's got some compassion and asks Edward if all those restraints are even necessary. But this Edward guy, he's a real piece of work, claims Gulliver's a spy from the enemy kingdom, Blafusha. Gulliver's had enough of this nonsense and finally speaks up like, yo, where am I? And then this jinx dude, the king's secretary, tells him he's in Lilliput, the greatest nation ever. Gulliver's all like, yeah, right, this must be some punked out prank. Where's Ashton Kutcher? Fast forward, and now Gulliver's stuck in a cave, meeting his new buddy Horatio, another prisoner. This poor guy got a life sentence just for trying to court Princess Mary. Edward shows up again, being a real jerk, listening to them like he's the king of everything. Gulliver even calls him a lame ass, which totally ticks Edward off. But Gulliver's quick on his feet and explains it means someone who's super brave. And wouldn't you know it, that answer totally impresses Edward. Next thing we know, they're all out in the field, with Gulliver strapped up in some crazy machine. But things get wild when they hear bells ringing and it's Blafushia attacking. They're trying to kidnap Princess Mary and set the palace on fire. Edward runs off all macho to save the princess, but Horatio's like, Nah, man, Gulliver's got this! Gulliver springs into action, taking down those Blafushian soldiers like a boss and rescuing the princess. But dang, the king and his secretary are stuck in that blazing inferno. No time to waste, so Gulliver pulls a wild move and pees on the building to put out the fire. It was crazy, man. Everyone's going nuts, clapping like crazy when he finally stops that fiery mess and rescues good old King Theodore. And guess what? The king's so grateful that he sets him and his buddy Horatio free from the slammer, giving props to Gulliver for his bravery. Sweet move, right? So the king's like, yo, let's party! and throws this epic feast at night to celebrate the heroic moment. But guess what? Our man Edward ain't having it. He's steaming mad because he's not getting all the attention for his supposed bravery. At the bash, the king's curious about Gulliver's origins and he's like, dude, where are you from? Gulliver's like, oh, just good old Manhattan. And whoa, the people jump to conclusions thinking he must have been the big shot president over there because he's the bravest cat around. Now here's the kicker. Gulliver's never felt like such a boss in his life. So he goes all out and spins this wild tale claiming he was known as President the Awesome. And get this, everyone totally buys it except for Mr. Sourpuss Edward. Next day, Lilliputians are on a roll. They're like, let's build this guy a massive crib with all the bells and whistles he couldn't get in New York. And you know what? The king's even like, hey, let's find this dude's washed up boat. Gulliver's like, yeah. And while you're at it, build a theater for the whole kingdom. Then it's showtime. Gulliver's got them hooked presenting a drama about the Titanic. He's got him believing it's his life story, and they're gobsmacked by all the tragedy he's faced. But wait, here comes Edward, trying to get with Princess Mary. She ain't digging him, but poor girl's stuck, because apparently they're meant to be together, because he's the bravest cat around. Princess Mary's not having it, but she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And here's where it gets juicier. 
The search party finds Gulliver's washed up boat, complete with cans of Coke. Gulliver's stoked because his phone still works. But oh snap, he's got 12 voicemails from Darcy and she's fuming. Turns out she's caught wind of his plagiarized article. Now she's going to do the Bermuda Triangle research herself, sailing the same route as Gulliver. Gulliver is all like, I'm not facing New York drama, man. I'm staying in Lilliput forever. But Edward's like, nah, dude, I don't trust this guy. The king, though, is like, chill out, bro. I trust Gulliver. Boom. Gulliver becomes the new general, and poor Edward gets demoted. Envy kicks in, and Edward messes with the defense system, leaving Lilliput open to attacks from Blafusia. Cue the epic battle. Blafushians come rolling in with their cannonballs, thinking they got this. But hold up, Gulliver's huge. And those puny cannonballs ain't doing squat. He saves the day and becomes the hero of Lilliput. And guess what? They shower him with everything he desires, even a mini Times Square. The people go all out Gulliver style, wearing his clothes and pampering him like a king. But uh-oh, drama alert. Edward's still not over the princess. He barges in all macho, claiming he's courting her. But plot twist. The princess isn't into him at all. Boom, rejected. Edward's like, fine, I'm going to Blafusha for backup. He finds that Build Your Robot book Gulliver had and makes a crazy plan to take him down. Fast forward, Gulliver's living it up in Lilliput's Model Times Square when a giant robot shows up. And guess who's operating it? Yep, good old Edward, dual time. Gulliver tries to fight but gets owned by the robot. He admits he lied about being the president and the king and princess are shocked. Edward's ticked off and he sends Gulliver to some forbidden island of giants as punishment. There, a little giant girl thinks he's a toy and dresses him up like a doll, pink clothes and all. Meanwhile, back in Lilliput, Darcy's dead body washes up and Edward's like, aha, this is Gulliver's princess. So he locks her up with the king and queen who got caught after Gulliver's defeat. But wait, Horatio, being the hero he is, heads to the forbidden island to rescue Gulliver. And you know what? He succeeds. But get this, the little girl's dollhouse has a freaking US Air Force pilot skeleton. Here, Gulliver uses a freaking parachute to make a daring escape and flies back to Lilliput, man. And guess what? He goes straight to see Darcy in jail and spills the beans that he's got a huge crush on her. Crazy, right? But hold up, she's chill about him copying that article and even seems to be warming up to him. Things are getting interesting. Now, this ain't some regular duel, bro. Gulliver's not out to prove he's brave anymore. Now, he's all about helping Lilliput for real. So he decides to challenge Edward, the bad dude who's holding the kingdom hostage. The next day, it's showdown time, and they're facing off, ready to throw down. Gulliver's got some serious conditions, man. If he wins, Edward has to give the kingdom back to King Theodore. But if he loses, it's game over, and the kingdom gets wrecked. It's a wild fight, but Edward totally wrecks Gulliver in no time. That's when Gulliver's bud, Horatio, comes to the rescue and sneaks into the robot that's controlling Edward. He takes down the baddie from inside, disarming the whole thing. With Edward out of the way, Gulliver puts up a fierce fight, and the crowd goes nuts, bro! Even Darcy is cheering on the sidelines. You know what's even cooler? Horatio's bravery gets him permission to court Princess Mary, and they finally lock lips. But hold your horses, the craziness isn't over yet. Edward loses his marbles and takes Princess Mary hostage. But she's had enough of his betrayal and unleashes a can of whoop-ass on him. For real! And check this out. Darcy finally kisses Gulliver. It's about time, right? Now, here comes the super-duper cool part. Gulliver steps in to stop the Blefician King and King Theodore from starting a war again. He does it by reciting some lyrics from Edwin Starr's war song, Genius Move, Bro! He brings peace between the rival islands, and then with Darcy by his side, they fix their ship and head back to New York City. Fast forward a few weeks, and Gulliver's ditched that mailroom gig, man. He's a travel writer now. And you know what's even better? He and Darcy are a happy couple, exploring the world together. The movie wraps up with them strolling out of Darcy's office, hand in hand. Hey, if you dig this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and drop a like to help out the channel, man. Thanks for watching, folks. Peace out!